Speedrun. What I can do is share my screen, you can then kind of watch my screen there. Oh, that would be good because that means I'm not on delay. Mm. Because it's often a bit tricky because I'm the only person getting audio in real time. But um, screen on delay. Oh shit, where's my camera still working? Uh, now's not time for that to go wrong. Right. Let's restart it. Um. Come on, camera. You can do it. Which camera's not working? The main cam. Mm. They won't know that I'm having a um Yeah, I will be. Okay. That is to be better. Hello weasel. Right. I need some new brushes. I think I might be able to afford to treat myself some soon. I think you might. I mean, I had two beers this evening. That's how proper that I should Check you out. Um, right, let's get some colours. It's actually the first time I've drunk alcohol in about two weeks because it's not working <laughs> for my weight loss. Yes, yeah, alcohol is definitely one to steer clear of. Yeah, well, it's like, I was like, you know, you actually look into it and go, right, two cans of beer. Oh, that's 400 calories. <laughs> Fuck that noise. Right. Okay. All right, just uh. I'm gonna put this out as a vod link tomorrow. I think that'll be tomorrow. Um, okay. And transition across. Uh, hello, everybody. I just realised that we were completely streaming our behind the curtains chatting about random stuff um that's hilarious that was um an accidentally on purpose audio test to make sure that it wasn't at all i hope we weren't saying anything that we shouldn't have been saying we don't say the things that we shouldn't be saying do we Russ? um constantly but not this evening so that's promising not this evening so um I, i've been painting already can you tell what you can't tell is what i've been painting from that but um Seriously, Matt, twice in one day, right? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah, the, the, your thumb officially represents a major spoiler that nobody would ever be able to work out what they were looking at. Boom. There you go. I think people can work it out from that what it might have been, but I am saying nothing. You will never drag it out of me. Um, right, let me um, grab a, uh, a quick bit of reference because we're going to paint a Pomeranian. Um, and I know uh, the wonderful Marcus has already painted one, so uh, in a completely original way, um, I am going to uh, copy his paint scheme, because why not? Okay, so it's that kind of colour. Right. Good, 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 uh, good. I'm just being advised, Matt, I'm getting, I'm getting information from the gallery that your microphone might be a little quiet. I... Um, maybe someone in chat can confirm that for us. Okay, I can turn it up. That's fine. There you go. I've given an extra 10 decibels. Boom. Blah, 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 blah. That doesn't look too bad. I'm kind of hitting the oranges. Do look. Sounds good. Tad quiet. I'm going to knock it up a little bit. Do you know what I think it is? I think everyone's so used to Russ's terrible microphone um, that, that now he's actually got one that works. We're all not used to it at all. True that. All right, so uh, we're going to be painting uh, Nightingale, the Pomeranian monk. I believe we went, we put a little bit of fluff out, didn't we? Did yeah, yeah, went out today in the new update. Yeah. Background story for her. So this is a pre-production sample that we've got, um, and I've just stuck it on like a just a, a normal kind of third-party um, third-party base. Uh, obviously, when you when you get yours, uh, you'll have a, a slightly more kind of depth on the base. Um, but we're just going to use some really simple painting techniques and to, to get a bit of colour on her. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to use Blonde Shadow, Reaper Master Series, as always. Um, 
I promise I will start using other paints as well, just so you see that these techniques just use for everything. Um, dipping off to the side, uh, I don't know if you can see on the on the palette cam, just off to the side um, is basically my sponge. Um, and whenever you see my hand go to one side, I'm just dabbing in there to kind of wake, make the tip of my brush wet. And then that helps me just kind of loosen the paint up. And then I make sure I've got a decent flow. I need to put my magic painting spectacles on. Otherwise, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. Because I'm old and my um, near vision is whacked. <laughs> right. I have to say, I'm really liking the new camera setup. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's um, It's... It's so much more reliable. That being said, we were kind of having a few little kind of camera issues earlier. Um, but it's just... The other camera that I was using just never seemed to ever kind of sort of stay in focus or sort of stay doing what I wanted it to do. Um, but this this new camera is, is absolutely genius. Right, so... I was asking, mate, do you always paint the body before the clothes or does it depend on the miniature? It depends on the miniature. So um, my theory is I always try and paint the lowest surface and, or, or the surface that's closest to the interior. So if you look at the legs that I'm painting here, if you imagine I put an ink wash into this part of the, uh, into the, the dog's leg, when I come to painting this upper surface, I don't have to necessarily worry about going all the way down because I've got an ink wash going in, if that makes sense. But as Russ will tell you, I tend to paint the entire model first. Yes, this is where we differ. I'm I, I'm very much a proponent and a fan of painting one particular part of the model to completion and moving on, which is probably both slow and laborious. It's just what works for me. Um, but if you want quick and effective methodology, watch Matt because he is the master at this stuff. So I'm using quite a shanky old brush. I do need a new brush. Um... This one is not working anymore. <laughs> it's, it's not the best. Is that broken toad? It is, yeah. It's like from the colour. Yo, Chris, uh, hook me up with some brushes, mate. I would order some, I'm just too lazy. Buy all of your brushes at brokentoad.co.uk. That's our 10,000 earned. <laughs> uh, I, um, I, I mean, I do like Chris's brushes. I really do. Um, but I, I always find it hard to kind of look past a um, Winsor & Newton series seven uh, series seven yeah series seven for the win um i find though the thing the thing with um most other brushes is the best in their range can beat series seven but with series seven they're just so reliable that's interesting though so not that i want to pounce on that but what what do you what would you say the best of kind of beats a series seven uh, I've had uh, a couple of broken toad brushes, which were uh, frankly phenomenal. Right. But they were standout from the crowd quality. Whereas I feel with my series seven brushes, they are mostly, in fact, pretty much one hundred percent reliable. I know every time I open it, what I'm getting out of that packet. Right. That makes sense. Could the camera zoom in a little more? On the mini it's a little hard to see on smaller screens it's tricky to move the camera too much but what we'll do is we'll repeatedly bring the model closer to the camera uh, at key stages in the process to talk through what we're seeing yeah the issue that I've got is there's a fixed focal link on this so if I come too close it will start going out of focus but, uh... one of the things I like about this miniature I think Nightingale has one of the most characterful faces of all of the models that we've got in this range I yeah think she has so much character I'm very proud of this model so let's have a little look and we're gonna so we're not gonna wet blend because I think wet blends an advanced technique but what I have done is left a patch on top of her tail because most dogs as you know tend to have a lighter patch that goes up from their butthole all the way up through the tail because the tails kind of curled over um, we're gonna just bring this kind of white stripe up so because I want to put a transition in from from a from a butt all the way up to like the tip of the tail I want this bit to be nice and white and then this bit is gonna blend in now you can see that this is still a little bit wet okay so this is important so so this paint is still a little bit wet I've just dabbed it with a little bit of water and now I'm gonna grab a little bit of white paint or well, this is like off-white it's like an ivory color 
And then just while it's wet, I'm just going to put the brush into it, right? Then I'm going to clean my brush off. And then I'm going to basically just pull it down. All right? And you'll get those two liquids mixing and the pigments will naturally blend, right? Pretty much. And that's it. Awesome. But now I can kind of um, go in and block out like where the where the white is. And now obviously we want it to blend into the side fur as well because obviously there isn't, you know, in animals there isn't really a, a hard line. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the white, water it down, and now I'm going to do the reverse process. I'm going to clean the brush off and then I'm basically just going to run the brush along. Nice. Whilst you're doing that, a couple of questions from chat. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of paint is the best to use with minis? Now, in terms of brands, there are as many opinions as there are brands of paint, but if you're looking at water-based um, miniatures acrylics, not artists' acrylics, but miniature-based acrylics, yeah. everyone has their own preferred brands. Um, Matt, you're a Serious Devon fan, I believe? Uh, series 7 brushes, um, I use Reaper Master Series um, as my paint of choice. Um, I do... See, I'm, a, I'm a Vallejo guy. So I do... So Vallejo is a very good paint. I find but Vallejo dries a fraction quick for my particular painting style. Okay. Um, so that's why I don't tend to use um, uh, Vallejo. Um, GW obviously are... Um, Tip top paints. Uh, they are designed nice. for this style of painting. Um, you know, um, in so far as you can get uh, the base colors um, that have lots of pigment, cover really well. Then you have the shades, which basically are washes that I use all the time. And then you have the highlights, I which would... are slightly more translucent paints designed to go over the top of a shaded base color, and and you know, and basically give you like a nice a nice bit of coverage and a highlight at the same time. So. Sorry, I interrupted you. I would you. honestly say, no, no, not at all. I would say that as, um, and this this is possibly contentious amongst very experienced painters, but as, if you are starting out, you should probably start at GW because nobody has put more thought into making their paint range accessible for new painters. Right, and um, and especially if you if you have a GW store nearby, um, they they are wonderfully good at being able to go in there and chat to them and, to, and talk to them about, about what you're painting. Um, and GW here is Games Workshop for anyone who's not clear on, on the manufacturer okay. we're talking about. But if you're going to your friendly local game store um, to pick to pick some stuff up, then I would also recommend um, just having a chat with, with the guy behind the counter. Find out if anyone in the store is a, is a painter. Uh, see what paints they use. Maybe get them to kind of um, give you give you a little bit of guidance because I think if you're looking for um, for advice and, and mentoring then then there's nothing better than well one uh, a YouTube video made by some a pair of stunningly handsome people obviously <laughs> um, I'm just trying to build this white up by the way um, mm. and um, uh, or or actually getting in into uh, into a store and next to a next to a guy that paints um, and, and getting them to, to show you the ropes. Um, if you're coming along to shows, uh, there's always awesome painters at shows. We've got um, Elizabeth who's going to be doing some um, painting for us at, at Gen Con. I believe she's going to be painting um, a limited edition um, or Gen Con edition Vax um, as amongst other minis. Um, so yeah, lots exciting. going on. Right. Um so yes, some other things that have come up in chat uh, just quickly. Uh, when will the dog ship? Well, we put next uh, May on on shipping. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we would be delighted if uh, they shipped earlier, but that is our realistic um, shipping window. Uh, so that's the that's the date that we're working to. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. So just to give everyone a, just while you're looking for the next question, so what I'm doing sure. here is I'm just uh, basically blocking out my big colors uh, or my big highlights. So I know that on this uh, rough around uh, around uh, her neck, uh, is it a him or a girl? It's a girl, isn't it? Nightingale. Nightingale. Girl. Yeah. Nightingale's a girl, yeah. So um, if the sunlight is coming directly down, then from halfway down, we will effectively be in shade. So what the temptation is, is, is always to kind of pull your highlight all the way down, but then you miss out on... All this opportunity for kind of creating an awful lot of contrast and because we're going to soften this out with a um, uh, with an ink wash uh, I can actually be quite savage with this with this highlight uh, and all I'm doing is literally using the side of the brush 
and basically just effectively wet brushing, which is like dry brushing, except you don't clean as much paint off. Uh, and I'm just lightly touching the, the model and just pulling it down just slightly past the equator, if you like, um, just while I'm blocking out, blocking it out. Sorry, Russ, I interrupted you. No, no, it's okay. I'm. Uh, I had a technical question which I was going to cite, but someone's asked when. Uh, when does a payment come out for a Kickstarter? Um, pretty much as when the campaign finishes, Kickstarter will automatically attempt to charge everybody's cards. And then, usually, my understanding of these things, because I'm not an expert, is that there's normally a couple of days of you know people's cards might get declined for security reasons. Um, yeah. So there's there's usually a few uh, toings and froings to make sure everybody has uh, made payments. But um, uh, people who have only pledged for lower amounts, because we have some people who have only pledged for a pound or a couple of dollars, um, will have an opportunity to increase their pledge uh, as well. And people who decide they need multiple sets might decide that they want to increase their pledge. Uh, and that happens a little, a short time after the, uh, the campaign closes. Tell me, stop me if I say anything that's incorrect, Matt. This no. is my first Kickstarter after all. That's that's all exactly as it is. Yeah, the money will they'll try and charge the account straight away, uh, and then they'll just keep recharging it uh, periodically um, for a period of time, basically. And we should highlight that that is a Kickstarter process. That is not us attempting to charge your card. Right. Um, Kickstarter handles all of that, and then. Um, awards us the, the funding once they've uh, dealt with it all. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going in with a mid-tone, which uh, is basically my base color mixed with a with a slightly lighter uh, yellow. It's actually um, the blonde hair. So if you look at the way the, the Reaper um, Master Series works, they're numbered. So sequential numbers generally go up higher. So I've got blonde shadow, blonde hair, and then if I reach across, and the next one in the series is, you guessed it, 258 is going to be blonde highlight. All right. And then what you can oh, see, so what you can see is, so these are why I really like these, because if you don't understand color theory or you don't want to mix your own paints, you can literally paint with this color, highlight with that color, do a final highlight with that color, and they will all work really nicely together. But it's the same principle the GW works from. I've just been pinged by... Uh by um, somebody who is far more conversant with these matters than I am. Um, if you are uncertain, and particularly if you're not UK based, uh, I've been told to recommend that you contact your bank in advance of Tuesday and let them know that an international payment will be made and that greatly increases the chance of payments going through without any problems. Um, because then the bank is aware that that's, a, that's activity that you're expecting to have happen. That sounds like good advice. It does sound like very good advice. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually um, I'm painting um, some highlights, but I'm trying to emulate fur. So I'm just literally got a relatively wettish paint, not not so it's running, and I'm just basically painting a texture on uh, by layering on little paint stabs, basically. Um, and what that does is when that builds up over over time that gives a sense of texture into the into the model now Russ and I have many conversations about when to when to paint uh, when to sculpt texture and when to not sculpt texture and it's, it's, it's very difficult to know precisely when to do it because sometimes it's really appropriate and other times it just makes the model look weird Do you remember when we did quaff the um, yeah. the brewers the brewers dog and we did a, a fur version of him and he he just looked like a woolly mammoth didn't he so. We, did. we had to tone it back quite a lot. Although the final model works very well, but it was an interesting, yeah, uh, interesting journey to go on. Um, somebody's saying um, uh, well, well, two things. One, uh, there's lots of conversation about who our favourite dogs are, which we'll get to in a moment. Right. And someone's saying, Can you make sure we don't have any critical role spoilers. There won't be any spoilers for campaign one, and there won't be any spoilers for the current campaign, and there certainly won't be any spoilers for anything coming up because we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we, we tend to be very um, respectful of spoilers. We don't uh, talk about the shows or anything like that. No, we don't. Um, my favourite dog is always going to be Monty the Bard because he's my actual dog at home. Um, and if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen a few pictures of him because he's had to go to the vet's late recently because he hurt his cheek. Um, but oh. he's thanks right back. Both of mine um, have ended up in, in the vet's this last couple of weeks. Yes, they have, haven't they? Yeah, I was back there this so, morning. Tedrick, the um, Chihuahua Rogue, is based on Matt's dog Teddy. 
Teddy, yeah, um, who may or may not may make an appearance on the stream. Depends on on whether he wants to <laughs> wants to. He's done it before, hasn't he? Where he's just he normally yeah, spends most of his days time. sitting on my lap. Um, so a quick tip while I've got this ink dry. So I've basically done a, an ink wash and now I'm just going to rub it with my finger. Um, and that just like lifts the ink off of that upper surface and helps with that transition. So I am washing with um, aforementioned um, uh, Games Workshop Citadel Shade. Uh, this is Seraphin Sepia. Um, Do you use the gloss shade or the standard shade? Standard. Not a... Do they do a gloss version? They do gloss versions. I think specifically they're for using on metals, but I've heard some people say that their um, smoothness of colour is better. Interesting. I suppose if you're going to paint with a, uh, or you're going to spray with a with a matte varnish afterwards, then why not? Have we had any more sessions of our D and D campaign? We have. We played. When did we play last? We played um... quite recently, didn't we? Uh, in a in a session where you were able to be there, even though you live many hours away from me, and one of the players who lives just down the road wasn't able to be there, strangely. Yes, that that was quite good actually. I think I um I slightly worried a few people when when Winter kind of um, showed a little bit of his mean side, didn't he? <laughs> yes. Um, we had a a bit of a an interrogation going on, and yes, um, uh, Clovin had to leave the room. He, he made a solemn promise to the prisoner that whilst whilst he was there, no harm would come, and then promptly left. And then promptly walked out of the room. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, this guy had been up to really no good whatsoever. Um, he was a very bad man. Yeah. Um, he basically killed his best friend in order to um, uh, steal his wife. And um, and then uh, the, the the daughter in the, in the relationship was becoming, proving to be an inconvenience, so he basically drugged her. Uh, to make her look like she's got an illness and then took her out into the woods to die. So we basically discovered all of this and, and decided to have a bit of an you know an interrogation to make sure that we got all our facts right. Yeah, she'd been rescued by lizard men, so uh, this was one of those situations where the monsters were actually the heroes here and the humans were the monsters all along. Um, someone's asking, what is an ink wash? Matt, do you want to just break down the process of, of ink? I do. I'm slightly worried that the camera's kind of locked up. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm getting a freeze as well. All right, let me just reboot the camera. Sorry, guys, this, uh, I think it might be the heat, yeah. yeah. Just, uh... Let's have a look here. Is it worth it to... Whilst, whilst you're doing that, I'll just go through a couple of questions. Is it worth to invest in Citadel Paints? If so, what sets would you suggest for a starter? I think if you're getting started, then the Citadel range from Games Workshop is certainly the most accessible. Um, as you develop, you'll find there are, there are paints that probably better suit your style, but as a starting point, definitely invest in a starter uh i believe they do starter sets but honestly the best thing to do is to if you can go to a games workshop um the staff there will be able to advise you on the paints to buy and if you aren't able to get to a, a games workshop at some point matt and i will probably be able to put out advice on what paints to use specific for the dogs yeah but Usually, I find, and Matt may or may not find the same thing, I find that you normally have a core palette of a dozen or so colours that you keep returning <laughs> back to. Uh, so every painter has, yeah, um, absolutely has uh, their favourite go-to colours. Uh, mine, is, mine is always red. Um, I love painting red, and I paint pretty much everything red. In fact, uh, I've just realised, so I've got um, a D&D one-shot that I'm running on... Um, on Saturday for some friends and uh, they decided that they wanted a sorcerer, a human sorcerer, a human cleric and a dwarven warrior. So I grabbed some models and thought, ah, oh, I'll just paint them. And you can definitely see that I like painting white and I like painting red. Because <laughs> wow. uh, they, they are the fastest colours that I can paint, basically. So, um, uh, yeah, green it is for me. Right. Anytime, if in doubt, I'll paint something green. Um, someone said, have we got any more plans to put, uh, have we got plans for having guest painters or, uh, or guest streamers come on at any point? Um, it's certain, we certainly wouldn't rule it out. Yes. Well, we're, we're lucky enough that um, uh, we get uh, rehosted on um, on the Critical Role uh, channel uh, quite often. Um, so that's obviously when we're doing Critical Role minis. Um, but uh, I know that there's uh, there's an awful lot of cool content coming in that direction so uh so yes i think it'll yeah, be quite fun excited for some of the things that are going to be going on there yeah. are there any particular breeds that you would most like to be part of the next set of dogs 
Wow. Um, so the big gap for me personally is we have no nothing from the Bull Terrier breeds. As a child, I had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Right. And our artist April is a huge fan of the American Pit Bull. So I think it's likely that we will see a Bull Terrier. I think H um, would, H would be happy if we did a, a Staffy as well, wouldn't he? Print technician is uh, is a huge um, is a huge Bull Terrier fan as well. In fact, we don't actually have any terrier breeds of any kind, which is a really strange oversight. I quite like a beagle. Uh, well, we've got our beagle barbarian. Oh, um, but I'd like a I'd like a basset as well. I guess yeah. I, th I think that's probably what I meant in my head, like yeah, or what I, I pictured exactly. in my head. When yeah. I, when I briefed a, a April to do a beagle, I meant basset. I meant basset. Yeah. My heart to, to change it when she'd done all of this amazing artwork. Well, we are terribly English. We are polite. We are terribly English. Um, the stream keeps freezing. Okay, so if you're having technical trouble problems watching the stream, then it, we'll be making the video on demand available tomorrow in an update, so you can pick it up directly from the Kickstarter page. Yeah, I do, I do look up periodically uh, to make sure the camera's not frozen. I just think it's kind of hot in here. Yeah, it is incredibly hot here in the UK, like it is most places in the world, but... Um, we're not used to this. We don't have aircon. We have windows, and they're not really working terribly. Well, they're no good when the outside is is as hot as Hades. No. Um, right. So someone was asking about a wash. So um, a wash is uh, basically um, a a specially formulated um, mixture of paint um, that is designed to run into the recesses. So what we're looking to do whenever we're painting a miniature is create contrast and, and the easiest contrast to imagine is the contrast between light and dark so where there is a shadow on the model you want it to be dark and when there is a highlight or an upper surface on the model you want it to be as light as possible right and this is what makes the model kind of pop um, there's other contrasts that we can mess about with in terms of color so if we look on the palette over here the darkest color that I use is for my base color the white is the highlight therefore I'm creating a contrast between the dark color and the light color as well as the actual um, shade um, where the underneath of the model was painted dark and the, and, the, and the top of the model was painted light. So what a wash does is it accentuates that. So when this um, um, kind of uh, purpley black kind of color is, um, is dried, I will uh, put a little wash over that um, and that will be a dark wash and it will basically sit in all the recesses. So if you look at, if I take um, this color here, the, the dark color, and I use my trusty thumb, I will paint my thumb with, with paint, all right? So that's paint. And then if I take a wash, uh, and I want my black wash here. So I'll take a black wash, and I'll paint the exact same kind of straight out of the pot, you will actually see how much more see-through it is. Yeah, is that coming through? Yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty clear. So it's like a, it's a bit like a, it's like a watery, oily kind of substance that kind of, and you can see as I run it up my thumb, it actually just runs down my thumb and pulls at the bottom, and that's what it's doing in all the recesses on the model. Is it's basically just pulling in the recesses. So these are fundamental to my painting technique. Um, I don't know if I could paint as quickly without these washes. So right. So just while that's drying off, and I'm going to put that wash on, I'm going to go back in. So the base color um, has had a, a, a sepia wash over the top of it, and you can see the results of that. It's basically helped to smooth out the transitions. It's also helped to kind of highlight, especially around in his face. You can see where it's all settled in his little face. So I'm just going to go back in with with my mid-tone, and I'm just going to basically get the, uh, get the paint. And what I'm looking at here when I'm messing about on the palette is making sure it's the right consistency and this is the hardest thing about painting when it's hot is the consistency of paint changes so quickly so what I'm looking for is a fairly runny um, consistency but not so runny that it's just going to flood all over the model now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to kind of hit these upper surfaces so the top of his head is going to be a surface so I'm just going to get the top of that and I'm going to kind of come down just inside the ears there and then round the side of his face, across the top of his cheeks, round the side of his nose. There are some uh, temperatures being posted in chat that make us sound like a right pair of uh, moaning myrtles. Oh really? 
Yeah, 41, 42. Of course, we have no aircon, though. You know, whatever it is, that's what we're living with. But, uh, yes. Are you sure that's not Fahrenheit that they're posting? Uh... Oh, Ruth Goblin says, I found your Kickstarter through an email I got from the Critical Role Kickstarter. I honestly don't know who you are, so could you plug your social medias and streaming platforms? <laughs> uh, yes. So so to give you the context, um, I'm Russ. Uh, I'm the sculptor for the Dogs Project, and I'm also the lead sculptor at Steamforge Games, and I sculpted all of the Mighty Nine, and I sculpted the about half-ish of um, Vox Machina, um, and you can find me on Twitter, at Russ Charles. Uh, and we'll we'll uh, I'll pop that in the chat now. Nice. And Matt, who you're talking, who is your uh, painting? Hello. Uh, so, uh, do I do me or do you do me? I don't know uh, what the protocol you, is. Oh right, okay. Um, so I I am I am Matt. I am the uh, creative director at Steamforged Games. Um, uh, Steamforged Games is uh, is something that I founded uh, a few years back with a with a friend, Rich Loxham. And um, he tends to look after all of the production and uh, logistical kind of side, and I tend to focus on the creative elements. So I get to work with Russ pretty much every day, and we get to talk about all kinds of wacky stuff, usually to do with Guild Ball or God Tier or Dark Souls or, or Resident Evil or, or any of the other kind of uh, cool projects we're working on, uh, Critical Role included. But uh, one of the things that we particularly enjoy doing is pontificating about D&D stuff and, um, and and certainly when we start talking about doggies um, we start getting terribly excited about it so uh, I'm on Twitter less frequently than Russ but you can find me at C4RP3R it's in the chat thank you uh, that was back when it was elite to kind of have all that kind of shenanigans going on in your in your username um, that's probably the best place to find me. I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly unprolific when it comes to Twitter. Um, someone says, "What do you do?" It's a, a popular question. What happens if you make a mistake when you're painting a miniature? So if you're quick, right? So let's, uh, let's, let's make a mistake, right? So uh, I'm painting this thing and I go, "Oh God!" Right? I've made a mistake. So I quickly clean my brush off, and then I basically try and get as much off as I can, right, with the brush. It dries, it always leaves a little ring mark, and then I can just basically rub that, all right, like that, and it's gone. Just move swiftly. And one of the great things about working with um, miniature acrylics is their opacity is pretty good, so yeah, it, it can be unfortunate, but you can paint over mistakes. It's very rare that a miniature is completely irretrievable. Yeah, it's it's um, it happens. Uh, it happens to everyone. You you will you will constantly kind of accidentally slip in. Um, experience will tell you whether you can fix it or not. Sometimes, sometimes you look at it and you go, "Do you know what? I'm going to make more of a mess trying to fix that than I am actually just taking just take your punishment." Sometimes and just say, "Right, I've got to let that dry and then I'm going to just repaint it." So uh, it's a dark color and it's contrasting. Um, don't be afraid to paint over it with some watered down white and then go back in with your main color yeah um uh which again it's it's slightly laborious but it's better than stripping the whole model and starting again yeah um so just so going in with pure white here just to kind of really catch the, the the kind of the tops of the highlights as you can see i'm not really trying to blend these in i'm because i'm using paint that's that is quite see-through um when it dries i can kind of you know as long as it's um water it watered down enough to kind of keep its translucency as it dries it just sort of blends in so i'm not even necessarily that worried about trying to blend the edges in so i really like that kind of honey color that you're getting it's such a warm friendly kind of blonde it's really nice there there is a reason i paint a lot of minis with blonde hair <laughs> this, <laughs> this this is definitely one of my favorite colors Right, someone's asking for cuddly toys of the dogs. That would be amazing. Oh, um, yeah. Will there be a Dungeons and Doggies too if everything goes goes to plan? Well, do people want a Dungeons and Doggies too? I mean, you know, it's down at the masses, surely, isn't it? It is. We've had a lot of people asking for cats. I'll tell you one thing that we probably will will not do, and that's cats v dogs. No, I'm not interested in doing adversarial stuff. Yeah. So. I think we've uh, we've kind of covered that off, haven't we? 
And Monty in the background. Uh, no, uh, it's not Monty. It's um, next door. It's Cody, the dog on whom Tobias the uh, warlock is based. Ah, uh -huh, right. Uh, yes, everyone's saying yes to dogs and yes to plushies and yes to cats. So we're just going to have to do everything. Yeah, there's I think no, there's no two ways about it. Well, you know, everyone's got. A... Kind of crossed a bit, I suppose. <laughs> um, no. We need YouTube for our video tutorials. That's something that we are going to have set up once the campaign closes. Um, so I upload all of these bad boys to to YouTube. I think it just goes to my account, but for the time being, because I'm not that technically orientated to kind of work out how to get it to. Oh, actually, no, that's um. Well, no, that is still true. But um, uh, the painting and polygons, uh, YouTube weirdness with the Google Mail locking out of YouTube and all that, appears to have fixed itself. Oh, fantastic. So uh, there's a fairly decent chance I can start uploading some of these guys onto uh, onto the Painting and Polygons YouTube channel, which will be cool. Yes, we had a, we had a slight issue with um, not knowing how polygons were spelled correctly, which caused us some problems. <laughs> we still have. Um, can... Which we have now resolved. I, well, I, I haven't managed to fix the... Um... I haven't managed to fix the Twitch channel yet because Twitch is still being a bit of a douche about it. It's kind of um, painting and polygons spelled correctly is gone, right? But I can't now take the name for this, so I'm gonna have to write back to them. So uh, just before we dive in, so I'm gonna do a wash. So this is uh, Citadel Shade, uh, no oil, um, and basically I um, this is quite a strong shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use neat shade underneath. All right. Because I don't mind the underneath of the dog being very, very dark. Okay, do you remember what we were talking about um, in terms of contrast um, from it's from light to dark? Shadows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush into my water so it's clean and carrying a little bit of water. And then I'm going to use that brush to load with some wash. And that just makes this wash a little bit thinner so it's not quite as overpowering. And what I'm doing is I'm just pushing this into the recesses. Um, I'm being careful not to kind of go over anywhere that we've been before because I don't really want to paint the legs all over again. Um, and you can see how it just sort of oh, how it just floods into the. Um... Uh, that's lovely. Yeah. So a couple of things uh, that, that we're getting out of the chat. Are we going to do more ZBrush and sculpting videos? We absolutely are. They were put on hiatus because uh, between Critical Role and Dogs, it just consumed so much of our time to get everything ready for this project. Uh, post Gen Con, yeah. um, we will be doing uh, some more sculpting videos. And it's very likely that um, Dogs content and Cats content will form at least partially the basis of the content that we do so just as matt's teaching about um painting techniques i'm going to be talking through the process of sculpting you'll be able to see what goes into making the miniature awesome uh, uh people would like to subscribe to the youtube channel fantastic um is steamforged games still based in stockport no i believe steamforged games has moved to uh, a, a lovely building in manchester now uh yeah trafford it's uh right next to the trafford center it is yes you probably hear the football on a on a weekend yeah uh, any thoughts about doing a contest or something to make or paint a fan's dog it was on the list of things that we would have liked to do however there are certain rules that you have to abide by to keep your um kickstarter on the straight and narrow and you're not allowed um by the rules of kickstarter run contests because it's seen yeah. as a slightly underhanded way to encourage people to back a project that they might not believe in yeah so post kickstarter well we had an idea didn't we yeah, uh, we had we by had the way i'm ideas. used so this is a uh, games workshop this is a base color retributor armor this is one of the best golds that you can possibly get on the market it's right amazing now stuff. amazing stuff but yes uh, um after the campaign's over it's one of many things we'd like to do yeah but we were we were looking we were actually looking potentially at the uh, patreon platform uh, as a way of um, of providing kind of a higher quality content um, for people, and one idea that we did bandy about was was being able to kind of work more closely with the with the Patreon um, community. But we don't know. We don't know. We certainly don't want to paywall anyone out of things. Um, but what we want to do is is be able to kind of get to a point where we we kind of able to make this as higher quality as we can and uh, that means lots of lovely cameras and lighting and all that kind of jazz um... okay a couple of questions um, 
any way to get the dogs painted so that you don't mess them up well uh we won't be painting everyone's dogs not with ten thousand backers but uh our advice is always if you're not a painter and you don't have the inclination time or resources to become one there is usually a very deserving person in your locality who will paint your miniatures and uh deserves paying for their skills uh i would encourage people to find their uh, their local uh commission painter um, I've commissioned painted in the past. I'm sure Matt has as well. And uh, there are some great guys and gals out there doing that sort of work. It's uh, it's definitely something you can find locally in, in your local game store. Or indeed, there is there is always um, online. Um, yes. And you don't even need to be kind of located near them anymore. Uh, you can just send them your minis and they'll send them back to you. Uh, quick one, um, not strictly related to Doggo, but from Flamage. Would the Yasha bust take a primer? So the thing with the Yasha bust to bear in mind is that much like the uh, collector's trophies that uh, Steamforge manufacture for Guildhall, um, that model has gone through a process of being um, antiqued uh, by hand and satinized and hand polished. Now you could prime that and paint it if you wanted to. Uh, I think it would probably work very well because the detail definition is very good. But you've got to remember that the polishing process will have removed some of the crispness of the, of the edges of the detail. That's just a natural uh, part of the process of creating the uh, the results that we've got on those pieces. Um, so yes, I think you could paint them, but I think you would probably be handling it slightly differently to how you'd handle a normal miniature. Yeah, I mean technically the paint will hold on yes, the on the finish. It will. Yeah. Um... I kind of wish I painted this necklace before I kind of did the ink wash. Yes, it would take ink, um, those those metal colours take ink washes beautifully. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to kind of re-ink over the top. Uh, uh, thank you to uh, Foxwalks X in the chat for uh, helping people out there with the painting uh, starting sets. Vallejo do a starter set that is very good. I believe that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a big Vallejo uh, painter. Most of my paints are Vallejo. Games Workshop starter we've already mentioned. I know that Scale 75 do starter sets, but those paints are a little bit more of a... Um, if you're a new to painting, um, as much as I don't want to ever say don't buy something, do not buy Scale 75 if you're new to painting. It will put you no. off for life. They are phenomenal paints, but you have to work so very hard to make them work properly. Yes, it's the difference between owning a push bike and owning a performance motorcycle. You know, one's easier than the other. Yeah. I love that gold going into that. It's such a great gold. I mean, you know, yeah. this is where Games Workshop really are peerless. Their metal quality on their metallic paints is superb. Yeah. I'm going to kind of get this underneath a little bit lighter. Would it be possible to get an additional dog mini in the Pledge Master? So, the reason that there have been no stretch goals or add ons is quite simply that uh, when we started out, this is our first Kickstarter as an independent um, prospect. And the most important thing for us was twofold. It was delivery, making sure we had a project we could deliver and accessibility. One of the things that um, the Critical Role project taught us was that uh, the most important thing that we could do was offer a product that was as accessible to as many people as possible. So we were determined to fit as much in as we could at the start for the best price point we could we could land. And rather than you know encouraging people to spend more money through stretch goals and add-ons, we just wanted to be able to, for people to say, this is what the project costs, this is what we're getting, and it's it's all on the table. There is nothing, there is no hidden agenda. We are being as upfront about it as we can because we think that's the right way to go. Um, and the result of that is that there won't be in this project any additionals because there is an upside to it though there, there is, is an upside to it absolutely there's an upside the upside is that is means that we can get onto doggies too a lot quicker uh yes. it de-risks the project it makes it much easier for us to make sure that we deliver this on time and to to a good quality um and and it means we can kind of dive straight onto the next project um as soon as we know that everyone's happy with what we've done so far i mean there is a whole world of um possibility that we want to explore with this um this is really just the start and i think that 
you know, like people say, the best book that you ever write is the one that you finish. The best project that you'll ever back on Kickstarter is the one that actually gets delivered. Um, and that is really where our our determination lies with this. Um, oh, somebody's asked, um, uh, will we post finished models of this when we're done with the paints that we used? I think you could do a little paint lineup next to the models. So yeah, we'll definitely. On Twitter. Definitely. And um, if we do an update over the next couple of days that involves a link to the... Um, stream we'll also put some pictures up of the miniature with the paints on there as well for everyone who's interested yeah no problem i just need to remember which paints i've used i think i've got all of them right i'll just keep them off to one side and we'll do a quick line up at the end right so i'm just doing his uh, his little face so just a little black nose um and i put a little dab of uh, kind of gray just on the tip and a little tongue again i just went in with a red and then i mixed a little bit of white and i just kind of gave him just a little bit of a highlight on the tip of his tongue I'm now going to go in and just uh, line the eyes. Never use black and white to do eyes. Uh, always use a dark brown um, and an off-white. Um, otherwise, an ivory is best, isn't it? Yeah, otherwise it just makes them look really weird and starey. So uh, I'm just going to come in and just line the eyes. I'm using quite a runny paint that I'm really carefully applying. And this is something that we can kind of go in and tidy up afterwards. But all I want to do is just make sure that the eyeball that, that Russ has uh, sculpted into the model uh, is basically lined with with brown. So what I'm doing here on my thumb, this is why I end up with it, is as I pull it back, I'm twisting it. So I'm creating a point and I'm thinning the paint off of the brush. All right. And I'm just making sure that I'm not going to flood the model. That's really going to give you a lot more control, isn't it? Yeah. Um, someone's asked if the... Um... The one shot is designed to be played over a few sessions or a single night. Really, that's going to depend on your group. We've written it to be uh, a substantial session's worth of material. So, you know, a four to six hour session. Yeah. Instead. I mean, what we quite like is we quite like the idea of people being able to pick this up at a con um, and, and play it at a con because it seems like the kind of fun thing to kind of do. Um, but, you know, we'll be, we'll, it'll be written in a way that's, that's extensible as well. So. Absolutely, but again, anyone who's watched any episodes of Kickst uh, Kickstarter, what am I saying? Anyone who's watched any episodes of Critical Role and knows what happens as soon as they arrive in a shop or a tavern. Well, we can't legislate for shopping trips. Yes, it's going to depend on your group and their own personal pace and rhythm as to whether or not it's one session, two sessions, or three sessions potentially. Um, but it is designed to the, the point of it is it's designed to be a self contained story. So you can drop it into a campaign world or you can use it as a one off. Fun piece. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I just went in with Ivory just while you were chatting, and I literally just touched the top of the sphere that you, you that you put in for the eyeball, uh, and where I've kind of lined it with brown, it now makes my eyes look like they're um, they're, they're wonderfully done. I'm just chuckling at Trendane's comment about swords in outhouses. Um, that's uh, technically that's a season one spoiler, so we're not going to discuss that. Um, are we going to be at NCM London, Matt? I well, so here's the thing. Yes, uh, I'm going to be at Spiel in Essen at some point in time over that weekend as well. So uh, I'm living the international jet setter's life. But um, no, I'm absolutely going to be at uh, Comic Con. Um, we should we should emphasise we don't have a stand. We're not. We, we are going as comics Ma fans and nerds. Um, Matt, myself, uh, my wife Kate, who is the writer on the Dog Project, is also going to be there. Um, I'll probably bring Tom, I think. I was going to say, probably a few more people as well. Um, we're mainly going to be there because we want to go and see our our new, uh, you know, our friends at Critical Role and uh, meet some of our new fans from this project and generally enjoy the, the atmosphere and ambience. Um, but uh, we'll have to wear some sort of um, identifying feature so people can know who we are. Oh, dog t-shirts, bro. Let's do dog it. Dog t-shirts, yeah. I'm up for dog t-shirts. I, I am up for Dungeons and Doggies t-shirts, mate. That'd be awesome. We'll have to ask April if we're okay putting them on a uh, on a t-shirt. Yes, bless her. The only downside to our artist being Australian and living in Canada, it's very difficult to actually arrange a chance to be in a in the same place as her at any given time. Where is she now? Is she in Vancouver? She, she's in Vancouver, yes. Right. I'm. Um, One place I don't really tend to get to too much with business. I believe she's going to pack some plugs, and I think, you know, based on the success of this project, anything that we do in the future, 
might lead to her being able to be at some shows with us. That's cool. Uh, I think I'm going to PAX Unplugged. Oh, are you? Oh, that's amazing. That's really good news. We've got a stand. Yes, I believe that half the reason that she's going is that she's got some hookup being arranged by um, Steamforge Defense Guy. Oh, um, cool. As a, as a favour. That's cool. Um, not 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 on a Steamforged um, side of things, but uh, because he knows events, he's helped to find a you know find accommodation and all the rest of it. Ah, oh, cool. No, oh, he's a lovely guy, sure. Could a dog druid turn into a human? Could a, oh um, love it. Could a dog ranger have a human companion? Oh, okay, that's slightly weird. <laughs> Uh, so uh, all I'm doing here, guys, is um, is basically just going in with uh, a lighter color. So the base color I went in and blocked out the um, the surfaces, and now I'm going in with a lighter color, which you can see over here on the palette is quite a bit lighter. Um, but because it's quite a bit lighter, what I'm trying to do is just really just do thin lines along the tops of these belts. Um, and one thing to stress is do not get worked up about trying to highlight every single one of these belts what well, all you need to do is hint at the fact that there is a, a cluster of belts there uh, that you can play about with um cool so that's that's looking real nice it's getting there isn't it so i've just got a little ink wash to go on the on the gold let's do that now and that can dry while i'm then sorting out a few little kind of accoutrements and so i'm going to use what am i going to use for that i'm going to use a flesh shade so why am I ask, why am I using a flesh shade, Russ, to to do gold? Uh, so uh, you're using a flesh shade to do gold because gold um, generally has very warm shadows. So what you want is an almost chestnut depth to it mm. because of the way gold refracts light. Um, it tends to uh, hold back uh, against its surface light in the red wavelength, which means that the shadows on gold tend to have a warm quality to them. Yeah, like if. If you use a, uh, a, a wash that has elements of, of red in it, then it gives your gold a massive amount of warmth and depth. And uh, we absolutely want um, Nightingale to have lots of warmth and depth to, to kind of match match the character of the, of the, the doggy. Radicus is asking, after a wash, do you go back in with a mid-tone or do you work with the lighter highlighting tone? Uh, mid-tone. Um, usually, like... The mid tone is my base tone, so I'll go in with the base tone. If I want to accentuate the shadows, then I'll go in then with a dark tone, um, and then I will then highlight. Um, there's a few people saying in chat they would love dog t-shirts and dog toys. I mean, we are cognizant of the fact that people would like merchandise, but we're also we don't want to get silly with it. So it's it's interesting to find out what the sort of things people are interested in. Well, so, I mean, it's one of those again. Like you know, as, as we've kind of said many times, Russ and I didn't don't really do this for the money. We do it for because it's cool. Um, yeah. But you know, if if we, I mean, we think it's cool to to have a dog T-shirt. But then we've, I guess, we've got a vested interest. But if if other people fancy the idea of a T-shirt, I mean, why not? You know, the I think the artwork that April's done is just phenomenal. Oh um, yes, it's stunning. Which is largely why I want a T-shirt. So maybe I don't know. We'll we'll find a way of sticking it up on Teespring or something like that. That's exactly what Tulbans just said in the chat. Oh really? Okay, I can't. Yeah. No, you can't see the chat. It'll come up on your screen in a moment. But yes, absolutely. So and then that way we don't need to necessarily hold, you know, an inventory or kind of worry about all that jazz. We can just stick it up as a Teespring campaign. People want it. Good. Go go for it. And you know. That's the sort of thing that maybe uh, Russ and I have spoken about this before. There's a couple of charities that both Russ and I um, are particular fans of. Or maybe we'll just do a charity t-shirt or something. Um, yeah. Right, so I'm just I'm going in with this with this, um, with this flesh wash. Because I really like the way it works with this brown. Just to kind of add a little bit of interest layer to the to the shadows. So I'm literally just painting into the, into the shadows. And then basically just smoothing the edge off. Cause I just want to get a little bit of a little bit of warmth going on in there. Somebody says April is amazing. You are not wrong. We definitely roll the natural twenty the day we found April. Yeah, she is um, tip top. She is phenomenal. Uh, what class would you recommend for a basset hound? Well, having seen all of the playtest rules that eventually will be coming out to you, um, 
Uh, I would choose a medium class dog and I would take the Bloodhound uh, ability. Uh, and then I might take the Alert ability as well. Um, but definitely Bloodhound. I mean, that's perfect for Basset Hound. Um, I'd have to have a double check, but yeah, medium dog with Bloodhound and one other ability of your choice would be my way to do a Basset. Alright, let's, um, let's grab a bit of this brown and so one of the things to kind of um, look out for when I'm painting any any minis but like this one in particular is is I try and keep quite a limited palette um, and by that I mean um, the amount of colors that I've actually put on the model are quite few if you look at the palette over here you've got the yellowy fur you've got the blue tunic and then you've got a few little kind of accent colors um, but it doesn't look like a, a 1980s website um, it's uh, it's it's basically quite color coordinated. If you actually looked at a color wheel, you'd see that this is um, uh, probably in clo like close to being in a in a triad. Well, interestingly, you've got a yellowy uh, a yellowy gold uh, brown uh, sitting next to a a sort of teal grey, yeah. and and orangey yellow teals work very well together. Um, so you've almost got like a classic triad. Um, color scheme. I think that 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 the dog designs lend themselves very well to that limited palette because of the slightly simplified nature of the dog fur and their equipment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Someone said, "Curse Molly Mork's coat on that one." Too soon, man. Too soon. Oof. Yeah. That. I don't know if I, I don't think I videoed that because I, I, I painted one for the um, the samples that we'll send an over to Critical Role to kind of see what they thought and um, I, I didn't have the guts to paint that one on camera. Um, well we were all set to paint another one and then that, <laughs> that didn't have to happen in the end. Yeah. Am I wrong in, am I right or wrong in saying that uh, you wait until the end to the lightest t tone of the triad colours you chose or have you been using it? So do you find at the end of the process you go through with the lightest colours and just start sort of spot pop everything? Yes, yeah. That's 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 the last thing um, that we do is, is, is basically make sure we've got getting pop on everything. Um, you can see I've made a little mistake where I've got like a little bit of red, so I'm just going to cover it up with a little bit of a white highlight. But yeah, I, I, I once I've kind of got the got the model roughly where I want it to be, then I'll I'll go back through and and just make sure that the key areas are kind of really coming out at you. Um, uh, someone said they uh, hope Critical Role would do a dog's one shot. That would be amazing. That mm. would be amazing. Have we um, asked April them? Is... Have they talked to us about it? Have we talked to them about um, it? Come on, let's make this happen. What do we have to do? I don't know. We we know well, people, surely. We, we, we know people. We'll see what we'll we'll see. We'll see. You, I I would say the odds of it are greater than zero. That's cool. Um, but, but but I know that April, being the huge okay. Christopher Roll fan that she is, has already talked about. She wants to draw Dogs Machina and the Mighty Wine. Oh my god! Uh, which would just be hilarious. That'd be amazing. Yeah, so I'm just noodling a little bit, getting some details in. I'm largely just waiting what? for everything to kind of dry off. I'm going to go in. So one of the things that's interesting talking about the washes is you can see that the gold, whilst it looks quite rich and, and wonderful on, on screen, has lost a degree of its shine. So um, what this will be the very last step is I'm going to varnish this with matte varnish and then I'm going to go in and put gold over the top so that makes the gold kind of uh, shiny again. But I can't do that until after I've done my matte varnish. It's interesting the different techniques people use to sort that that situation out. Like I say, you can get a gloss finish wash for that. Yeah. Um, and I know that um, some people will go in and use silver, like you and I would use white to put spot highlights of shiny silver on the gold to look like reflective points. Have, um, have you ever got on with that? Because I've tried that a few times, and I, I I've tried it. I find it looks very artificial. But yeah. I've seen people make it work very well, so I've come to the conclusion it's me that's at fault and not the technique. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm as keen on it, especially like you know when you look at like some of the like the GW Studio jobs for the, um, you know like the Sigmarines and everything because they're very gold orientated. I'm I'm not sure I like gold going all the way up to silver. Kind of thing. If you're going to do that, why why 
Why go gold in the first place? Russ is um, typing, therefore typing. he is not capable of talking. I can't, uh, I can't speak. Um, Who are you typing to? Charles? Is he backstreet kind of directing again? He is, yes. <laughs> right, so let's talk about basing. So um, this this guy's on a plane base, so I'm going to use uh, another GW product. Um, uh, which is basically um, this um, technical paint, uh, which is largely a. Oh, it's not even on camera. So, um, Sterling Battlemire. It's a Citadel texture paint, which basically means it's um, full of kind of grit and sandy stuff. Um, and it needs a little bit of watering down and to kind of turn into something that you can actually paint on. Um, but basically, I'm, I'm grabbing a bunch of this. Don't do what I'm doing and use one of your better brushes. This is why my brushes don't last any time. Um, use an old brush for this. Wow. Then what we're going to do is get a bunch of this. We're going to clean our brush up, I think. I don't want to drown it. Grab a bunch of this and then this is just going to get painted onto the base. Uh, someone's asked if you use acrylic gold or an alcohol-based gold. Um, the, the Games Workshop paints are all uh, standard acrylics. I think the only company that makes an alcohol-based acrylic that I know of is um, Tamiya. Uh, I do. I have used um, Alclad, which is a Japanese make. Um, if I, but it's such a palaver to actually use. But yeah, I, I would steer clear of the, of the alcohol. Stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd stick with the Games Workshop ones. I think are the most user-friendly and quality uh, golds that you can get hold of. Okay, so um, you can see on the base it's got like um, just little flecks of stuff in it, so it looks kind of rough. Uh, if you give a terrible pun, um, <laughs> and uh, it's got a bit of pigment in it, so that'll dry off. Um, but yeah, just gives you a nice little base. Someone's asking how much we would estimate it cost to get someone to paint a miniature. That unfortunately is is such a variable amount that it's very difficult to to suggest a number. I've seen people paint miniatures for a few for a few pounds each, and I've seen people charge fifty or sixty pounds for a single figure. A lot of it more. a lot of it depends on the um, on the quality that you want the model painted to. Um, the thing to bear in mind is it's time. Um, now. I've painted this model probably if I was commission painted I would have painted this in half the time because I would have probably painted two or three models all at the same time um, and you know you have to think what what is a what is an hourly rate for a for someone who you know who's painting painting the mini so um, I would suggest that 20 or 30 quid a model isn't unreasonable for a decent paint job just to give you a, just to give you a rough indication. Right. I mean, obviously, we've had people asking, you know, if we could have supplied them painted, having seen the ones that Marcus did for us. But you know, I know for a fact that Marcus spent an entire day on each miniature. So, right. Uh, I'm not sure that he has enough days left in his lifetime to paint <laughs> all of the models that we're going to be sending. Yeah. To. So he's he's like a professional studio painter rather than a commission painter. That's the difference. Um, right, the sides of the base are a little bit on the uh, on the wet side, so I'm just going to stick this guy on here just so I can kind of come in. Finish. I want to finish the gold off just while the sides of the base are drying. So I'm just kind of spot highlighting with the gold. And this for me is enough for the gold. <laughs> this is why I don't think you need to kind of silver it. No. I think as long as you make your shadows super matte and super kind of dark. The original gold is, is plenty to kind of give you a give you a highlight. Someone's asking for conversions of pounds and quid into dollars. Um, one point one seven. One pound twenty five ish ish per dollar. So fifty pounds is between sixty five and seventy five dollars, depending on the exchange okay. rate. Okay. So ten pounds would be between twelve and fifteen dollars. And yeah. In the spirit of translation, a quid is a pound. Yeah. Oh, the camera might have gone again, my friend. Is it? Oh, okay. Well, that lasted a fair amount of time. Right, let's just reboot it. 
Let's just reboot. Yeah, I, I rather suspect that is the heat because that is. Um... I think the most that I've seen anyone pay for an individual miniature is about two hundred and fifty dollars per figure from one of the very famous uh, painters, um, a guy called Angel Geraldes, um, who is a phenomenal painter. Mm. Uh, and you know, people will pay an awful lot of money to get models done to a sort of very, very high display standard. Uh -huh. But those aren't for gaming. Those are, those are like art collectors' pieces, you know. Cool. Great. All right. I think uh, I think he's pretty much done. To be honest with you. Uh, good. Yeah. Got a cheeky little face. Um, what's interesting is where you've sculpted her is I, I I think you could arguably paint those back legs as pantaloons as well if you wanted to do them in in, in so color. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know that um, Marcus uh, painted them as fur, so I, I kind of just copied him. But um, looking at them, you could easily paint them as pantaloons and, and easily get away with it. So, um, yeah. But, you know, hopefully that helped. People enjoyed that. Um, who else have we got lined up? So, well, we're off to Gen Con soon, but I might try and squeeze another stream in maybe over the weekend if I'm not too, being too ambitious. What about Sunday? That would be pretty impressive considering everything that we've got on. Yeah, should we try and squeeze another one in Sunday? Um, no, why not? Why don't we have a um, we'll have a vote? I've got uh, three more production pieces. Um, it's the it's the original three. Look at them all lined up. So um, we'll find a way of getting a survey monkey out. Uh, let us know who you want to paint on the stream next, and uh, we'll do uh, Cornelius uh, Montague or or Tedwin. <laughs> Charles would like to remind you that he needs a painted Caleb as well. Uh, yes. Tomorrow night's job. <laughs> um, if someone is painting for uh, Right, how much does paint cost? Uh, I, oh, again, God. It, that's, a very, that's a very piece of string section. I recommend looking at your local games workshop or a local gaming store or looking online for a games workshop starter kit and expect to pay somewhere in the region of... 25 30 pounds which is 35 to 40 dollars yeah i mean i would yeah i mean reckon on each pot of paint costing you about three or four quid and uh, so what's usually about five or six bucks for a pot of paint um uh, but charles, charles is our resident american is putting actual useful prices up. oh there you go yeah because we like making it up um <laughs> But yeah, get along. Uh, so again, my my kind of favourite, and I, I am not sponsored by them. Although Reaper, if you do want to send me more colours, uh, don't because I've got all the ones I need. Um, um, but these guys uh, go to a lot of game shows. Um, so if you're going to a game show, you know someone is. Uh, they do pick and mix, so you can literally just go and pick the colours that you want, mm -hmm. and you put them all in a little basket, and they just ring them up through the till. And I think it's like ten paints for like thirty bucks or whatever it is, or, or twenty bucks. So um, it's very good value. Yeah. Uh, before we sign off, two things. First yeah. of all, can we show some love in the chat for Marcus, who's just posted? Um, Marcus Stro there is the person who's painted all of the miniatures that you've seen and on is, Kickstarter. Now I'm embarrassed because he's considerably better than I am. And, and I think we can all agree he did an absolutely phenomenal job. They are stunning. Um, and the other thing I'd like to say is to everyone who's dropped by and everyone who's supported the uh, campaign, um, thank you so much. It's been uh, amazing and it continues to be amazing. Yeah, you guys rock. So we can just continue to deliver the best project we possibly can for you all because you all deserve it. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick lineup of the colours that we use to paint the mini. Just so people have got them there nice and handy. And I don't forget because this will be in the video now, won't it? So we started with uh, blonde shadow, blonde hair, blonde highlight, and uh, we went all the way up to ivory uh, as our um, base honey color. Uh, we washed that, uh, of course, with uh, seraphin sepia. That was the main body. And then um, I am gonna be a bit of a, a, a douche because this is a unique blend of a paint, um, but you can use coal black from P3 is the exact same color. Uh, so coal black from P3 uh, for the uh, body. Uh, which I highlighted just with the ivory and then I used a mixture of black and brown and pure black for the leathery bits um, I used uh, retributor armor for the goldy bits um, and which I washed both of those respectively with null oil and flesh wash uh, as my shades 
and um, I did his little tongue with Fire Red from Reaper Master Series, and then we did the basing with the um, Sterland Battle Mile. And that is that. Amazing. Oh, good. So I think I might go and sit outside and drink um, something that has alcohol in it to um, try and cool down, because that's like a known property of alcohol, isn't it? <laughs> yes, a nice cool of whiskey. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so, guys, thanks ever so much. Um, amazing to see so many people come and, and hang out. Um, uh, let us get John Gen Con out of the way. Um, I am going on family vacation as soon as I get back from Gen Con, but um, come September, um, uh, and the weather's cooled down a bit, Russ and I are really seriously ramping up the, um, uh, the streaming. Uh, we just love hanging out with you guys and uh, just want to do more of it basically absolutely do come and find us at Gen Con we'll be on the Steam Forge oh yeah booth. come and say hello uh, at Gen Con come and say hi come and chat to us we'll be right next to the Critical Role booth as well and it's possible that we may have a couple of Critical Role live tickets that we will be looking to give away in some format or another to be confirmed but oh. definitely come and say hi Doggos is there so yeah well you are too late for this stream we will catch you next time. Um, but the vid video of the day will be up, and it'll go on YouTube as well. So oh, and there's a new, there's a new, uh, there's a new D and Doggo's comic due out oh, no. tomorrow. Don't forget tomorrow. Check that out. Be sure to check it out. All right. Good night, folks. Yeah. Good night. Take it easy.